Hello and welcome to this training video for SEMA E1 Enterprise Operation. We're on Chapter 3 of the Express Notes and this is um, all about information systems. Now if we move down, let's have a quick look at what do we mean by information systems. Well, in, in very simple terms, an information system is something which converts raw data into management information. Raw data is just a collection of, of figures. It doesn't mean anything. This concept of raw data doesn't mean anything. It has to be converted into management information. And we do that conversion by using information systems. An example of a simple relatively simple information system is an Excel spreadsheet where we input the raw data we convert it using various formulas within the Excel spreadsheet and then we get out the other end management information now what you'll see here we've got an arrow saying we've got raw data converted with information systems to provide management information and management information should be accurate. Now what do we mean by accurate? Accurate is a very well-known mnemonic and if we look on the next page, on page 16 of the notes, it tells us what is meant by accurate. So we have good information is accurate using the following mnemonic. So we have accurate if information is accurate itself, if it's complete, cost beneficial, so the cost of actually getting that information is worthwhile when we look at the cost versus the benefit, the information is understandable, it is relevant to what we want it for, adaptable, we can change it, we can flex it, timely, it's provided on a timely basis and easy to use. So a useful mnemonic to remember, good information is accurate. And we have a quick line here saying, well, who's using the information? Well, it could be internal users, for example, management, or external users, shareholders, potential investors, banks, and such like. So what can we use all this information for? As we're saying here, information systems can be used by an organization to improve its performance and the market position. Now, I'm just going to link in with one of the more well-known business models, Porter's Five Forces. And we're going to use this as an illustration of what can we do with the information we've obtained. Porter's Five Forces model by, by Michael Porter. As the name of the model suggests, there are five forces, five forces on a particular organization. We have potential entrants to that market. We have suppliers, we have customers, we have substitute products, we have the competition. And these five elements or these five forces will all be having various different pressures applied to an organization. So an organization would need to obtain information to see how much pressure each of these forces is placing on an organization. And then importantly, what should they do about it? Now we have more detail on the next page about Porter's five forces. And I'll, I'll leave you to read through this in your own time. But this provides information about examples of the various five forces within Porter's five forces model. The next thing I want to move on to is something referred to as CRM systems, customer relationship management systems. And this is... Um, something of an emerging trend because what we're seeing in a lot of organizations now is the establishment of quite sophisticated CRM systems and exactly as the name suggests these are systems information systems 
to ensure that we can deal with the relationship of a customer. And as we say here, we want to make sure we really look after the relationship with the customer so we can develop it across the various different functions and ultimately to enhance the relationship, which ultimately will then lead on to better performance by an organization because of the good relationships with its customers because of the future business they can generate. Moving on to the next page. Top of page 18, we have virtual organizations. Now, what we're seeing with virtual organizations, virtual organization is a relatively modern phenomenon. And it means that it is not doing all of the traditional items that a, an organization would do. Instead, we have a central host organization, but it's almost outsourcing a lot of the key areas. So it will outsource, for example, product design. It could outsource product manufacture, product delivery, and so on. It can outsource the marketing so that, that the product image and branding can be outsourced. All of these various things used to be dealt with internally, and in fact still are dealt with internally for the vast majority of companies. But what we're seeing with the growth of the internet, that a lot of these activities can be outsourced. Now that's an advantage because you don't have as much cost tied up in these in-house items. The next uh, item just to have a very quick look at in terms of some emerging trends and that's all about social networking. A lot of you will be familiar with social media and what we mean by social media we have Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter and all of these enable organizations and companies to build relationships with large numbers of people. An emerging trend Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. Importantly companies should make sure they have a defined social networking strategy. What approach is the organization going to take to LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook? The last bullet point paragraph here within the chapter is there are lots of benefits of information systems. Lots of benefits but also just be aware of the costs. And what we say down here, it's not just the tangible costs, the things you can physically see. So, for example, the hardware, there are various intangible costs. So the example we've got here, distraction to the staff during the training period. That is a cost of implementing new information systems. Okay, that finishes this video. So thank you very much for listening.